It's very rare for a vehicle so potentially controversial to be added to Gran Turismo and yet somehow end up being an absolute weapon when used correctly, and that is exactly what the Lamborghini Urus represents. This thing is ballistically quick, especially when tuned, and even if you don't, it's not exactly slow to begin with. But that's the funny thing. For every person who couldn't care less about this car, there are two or three people who seem to absolutely love it. For me, I'm not a super fan of the Urus. I'm more of an LM002 kind of guy when it comes to my Lamborghini 4x4s, but I do love this one coming to the game for two reasons in particular. Number one, it's nice to have a genuinely different Lamborghini added rather than just the expected supercar stuff. Secondly, having a new super SUV or even just SUV in general in Gran Turismo 7 is kind of a big deal. We don't exactly get a lot of them, let's put it that way. Mostly trucks dominate this kind of sphere with the occasional minivan, like the fantastic Alphard with its V10 swap. This one though represents a genuine super SUV, an SSUV if you will. So what do you get in terms of the numbers? Well, if you were one of the people who perhaps didn't log into the game or just briefly jumped in, looked at it and jumped back out again without really driving anything, you might actually want to stick around next time you do log in and give this car a try because it's a lot of fun. It's 300 grand to buy. It is the lowest out of the three added, unsurprisingly for point level. In fact, it's a hair under 550 points, 641 horsepower, stock from of course that turbo aspirated V8 engine and of course it is very heavy at just under 2.2 tons 2197 kilos of course four wheel drive naturally and the shape of the Urus despite being an SUV technically is more of a crossover kind of style which I think might be why some people aren't a huge fan of it that and it being an Audi essentially underneath but that also gives it an advantage in terms of how stable it feels when you don't have that huge canopy kind of like my own you know Escalade that I had you've got all that space and all that practicality hanging literally off of the back end but then the downside to that is how much it's going to sway around through corners kind of muscle car style with this one and with pretty much any crossover for that matter where they have that sloping down back end and a much more compact kind of layout it actually means you can take corners surprisingly well and typically you'd find something like a Urus more so in a game like Forza Horizon or I could definitely see this being in like a test drive and limited solar crown for example it's that kind of machine so to have it in Gran Turismo of course for the first time ever is kind of a big deal, even if you're not a fan of it. Now, fully tuned, that is where things really get fun, because this thing, as I alluded to in my overarching review of the update, is actually more powerful, fully upgraded. In fact, it's more powerful under all circumstances, from standard to completely tuned, than even the Audi R8 V10 Plus is. That's pretty impressive. In fact, it's the most powerful out of the three vehicles, which is easy to overlook, but that's kind of insane, considering that the Toyota's nowhere near as powerful as it used to be. So fully tuned, you're looking at up around 1,030 or so horsepower, and you can drop the weight by a lot to around, I think it's the 1,600 kilo region, I want to say. And the one that I'm driving here is upgraded. You can see just how ballistically quick it is, and that's still technically on sports tires. And that combination of sports tires with fully upgraded power and weight really is where this car comes into its own because having those sports tires allows it to barely scrape 700 points with around a thousand horsepower and it's so ridiculously quick off the line and even the top speed is very good for what it is that it really is a genuine weapon to use. Now I haven't actually tried using this one for something like uh, Le Mans for example at the 700 point event. Of course you have to use racing tires for that one so technically you'd have a little bit less power or at least more weight. I could see it being a very good choice though certainly because of the four-wheel drive in inclement weather but at the end of the day even if you don't like it it is a very useful useful car to use and I think the overall vibe that this one gives off kind of reminds me of two SUVs in particular which we used to have in Gran Turismo. You're probably expecting me to say either the Range Stormer or the Audi Pikes Peak Quattro but actually no. This one reminds me very specifically more so of the Mazda MX Cross Sport and the Infiniti FX45 because those were both less obvious and certainly a lot smaller than the Range Rover or the Audi, but they were also way more compact, and that made them really good through corners, and even with far less horsepower, they were still tremendously quick off the line. This has even more horsepower, so it's even quicker, but you still get that compact, 
ball of energy or ball of muscle, as I often refer to it, with these kinds of machine. And you can feel that. You have very little body roll. This one, I'm running the full ride height on it, and it still doesn't feel like it's going to tip over. It's actually hilariously fun to drive, and the fact that it is so stupidly quick as well just makes it that much more fun, especially on top of the fact that it's the same price as the Audi also. I mean, talk about overshadowing an Audi R8. This thing obliterates it in terms of value for money and just how ridiculously fun it is. For those who don't like the Urus, maybe you don't like the look, maybe you don't like the Audi underpinnings, maybe you're just not a fan of how everyone and their mum seems to be developing their own SUV these days, that's entirely understandable, and I wouldn't hold it against you, especially when it comes to crossover-style SUVs, but... If you do decide to give the car a chance, you might be pleasantly surprised, because even if you don't like the concept of the vehicle, it's a lot of fun to drive, and it's definitely more fun in my opinion than the trucks are, because they feel every bit as big and as heavy as they are, whereas this, it doesn't. It feels much more compact, much more nimble through corners, and even though it is very grippy, you'll see later on in this event, I switch the 50-50 torque split down to about 2080, I think it was, or maybe even 1090, and you can drift this thing all over the place, literally without changing any of the settings, just the torque split. So it's an extremely versatile machine. And on that point, both in games and in real life, I think that's actually my personal reason why I do like SUVs and why I do like super SUVs. They are so versatile. I love the fact that it's genuinely a machine which, at least in theory, some of them aren't as good at this, but at least in theory, you could drive off-road on dirt, snow, whatever, but then use it as a practical daily and have supercar levels of performance in some cases. Most people don't tend to tick all of those boxes and it's just a poser's car, but at least in a game, you do get to actually do that. It's kind of like a triathlon car, if you will. So for me, I'm definitely biased toward liking vehicles like this, but for some, I get it why you don't. I would love to hear the thoughts either way though. For those who don't like it, the reasons why, especially if there are reasons that I didn't mention, and for those who do love it, maybe if you have used it in particular for stuff like cash cow events, I'd like to hear how effective it was. But of course, we've only got one more car to talk about, the Audi R8 V10 Plus from this update, and that will of course be coming tomorrow. So I'll see you then, and for now, thanks for watching.